Hello and welcome to live athletics now from Turku in Finland, the southwest tip of Finland to be precise. It's a truly lovely early August evening here, about 20 to 21 degrees centigrade. Not much wind and do not adjust your set for these 58th Pavo Nomi Games of 2020. Track and field athletics is back. Well, Finland and much of Scandinavia enjoying the glorious warmth that uh, much of Europe, Northern Europe is bathed by at the moment. Turku is the former capital of Finland. A big river runs through it. Capital, of course, now Helsinki, which is a couple of hours drive away. But it really has a delightful demeanor, the whole city. And this meeting was first staged in 1957 as a birthday present to Nermi on his 60th birthday. He was born in Turku, died in 1973 at the age of 76, and uh, won nine Olympic gold medals. No wonder he's got a meeting and a stadium named after him. There's the uh, early lineup. The men's 400 meter hurdles will be the first event on the program for us in this coverage, followed by the uh, women's high jump final, which gets underway 10 minutes later. We'll, of course, be dipping in and out of those field events as best we can and showing you the best of one or two field events that have come up already. The program concludes with that women's 100 meter hurdles final. A lot of domestic interest expected to be in that one. Plenty of British athletes here, but a really good smattering of the top Europeans. As you can see, they're saying it's 20 centigrade. Well, it feels a lot warmer, I have to say. Just strolling along by the uh, river last evening. I think uh, quite late at night, it felt like about 20, 22 degrees. 5,000 spectators in the stadium. And they were due to be using alternate rows. Although uh, there are good numbers on the back straight and in this main home straight stand in this Pavo Nermi Stadium. All this meeting, of course, is a uh, concept of the uh, Continental Tour, recently dreamt up by World Athletics. It's a clearly defined and easily understood series of one day meetings. This is a gold level meeting. There are gold, silver and bronze, ranked by level of prize money and quality, which provides the international competition and a pathway of opportunities for the majority of international athletes all the way up to major international championships. And it enables athletics, of course, to be showcased in a clear structure with specific tiers of competition. Say again. The uh, president of Finland there sensibly masked up, not taking any chances, although uh, COVID-19 in these parts, I can tell you, has a very, very small part to play in day-to-day -day life at the moment, thank goodness, unlike other parts of Europe where so many are suffering. But they're enjoying here a really relaxed atmosphere, I have to say, throughout the city and in the hotel, where lots of precautions have been taken for the, uh, for the elite athletes. Well, the uh, pole vault got underway just a little while ago. And uh, Holly Bradshaw in this competition, she's in very good form indeed, is the uh, Briton. She's the best of four metres 73. She's uh, last in the jumping order of just the five athletes. Comes from Preston, from Blackburn Harriers, coached by Dan Faff and Scott Simpson. She's a, a former gymnast. But that didn't look uh, great from Bradshaw. Come off games fourth place for a couple of years back. She's undisputed British number one and certainly one of the best in Europe. She has 13 national titles and at the moment ranked her number five in the world. She vaulted that 473 in Kurotane here in uh, Finland just 10 days ago. And that was the Saturday before last. Well, we'll come back to that at the moment. Bradshaw cleared the previous height 4.41 without any problem. There's the lineup for the first event on the track that we're seeing, the 400 meter hurdles. What a good lineup it is. Leighton and goes in one. Chris McAllister, semi finalist of the World Championships last year for Britain in two. Rosmus Maggi of Estonia in three. Ludwig Vion of France, very good athlete. Vion, 48.3 performer. He goes in four. Good lane draw that for Vion. 
Patrick Dobek, again a 48 second man. He goes in five. The uh, pole, Moro of Finland six, Ramsey Angela of the Netherlands in seven, and Nick Schmidt of the Netherlands in lane eight. There is Schmidt. Hasn't broken 50 seconds this year, but a European under 23 silver medalist last year. Four times national champion for the Netherlands. Had a really good opener in Arnhem just last week, 50.36. There's Angela, compatriot of uh, Schmidt, so the Dutch in lane seven and eight. Ran a personal best on the 24th of uh, July, and close to it again just last Wednesday. So in really good form, Angela. Oscar Di Moro, they've been given a big cheer by this crowd. Six in the World Junior Championships back in 2012. His first outdoor race this, he's a 49 second man and his best 49.04. Dobek of Poland, they're so good over the barriers, the Poles. Comes from the Sopot Club, so we'll have been enjoying the seaside warmth and those glorious beaches in Sopot recently. 48.4, his best, though it was a few years ago. Ludwig Vaillant, well, the Mediterranean Games champion a couple of years ago. Has great flat speed, he's a 45.2 man on the flat and a member of the French 4x400 team. His first outdoor race of 2020. There's Rasmus Maggi of Estonia, sixth in the Rio Olympic Games, the uh, Estonian, 28 years old now, coached by his parents, by the way. And again, his first outdoor race of the year. And there is Chris McAllister, coached by Marina Armstrong, ran a personal best for 400 flat in Nuneaton, about almost exactly a month ago, 47.3, then uh, 50.1 nine days ago, again at Nuneaton for 400 hurdles. And Thomas Leighton and that, personal best in most recent race but he will struggle here lane one and he's never broken 51 seconds everyone outside him has broken 50 seconds in the past so the fastest time in the world this year 49.49 by Konstantin Price of Germany that was back on the 3rd of July and the stadium and meeting record is uh, 49.44 by Larue Haman of South Africa that was four years ago so, as I said, a world best. You would just about have to break the meeting record. They're only four one hundreds apart. Nice conditions here. Very slight breeze across the arena. 20 degrees centigrade if you just join us. The uh, flags at the far end of the stadium hanging still, almost still. Leighton in one, McAllister two, right? Maggie in three, Vaillant of France in four, then Patrick Dobek, Poland five, Moro, Finland six, Ram Angler seven, and Schmidt in lane eight. Set. So, who will be just uh, getting rid of the rust here? And who will be producing something rather special? Certainly it looks like Vaillant in four has gone up pretty quickly there, fourth and right centre of picture. He's a tall figure, isn't he? Long rangey stride in the dark blue strip, and he leads at the moment, I think. Going well to his uh, lane seven is Ramsey Angle, a second to left of picture. But Vaillant France, the 25 year old, with such good flat speed, dominating this at the moment, although inside him, Maggie is having a solid run too. Third from right, as we see them now, coming into the straight, there's good running too towards the outside from the two Dutch in lane seven and eight. And I think Vaillant is going backwards now. He's gone too hard here. Maggie seems to have timed this one well in lane three, but it's on the outside. It's Nick Schmidt of the Netherlands coming through to take this one. What a run from him, 49.86. Well, that's a season's best for him. It's about half a second outside his lifetime best. And uh, this young man is going from strength to strength. Last year, a European under 23 championship silver medal. But he is now 23, he's in the big pond, and he kicks off his 2020 season very, very well indeed. I say he kicks it off, he ran 50.36 a couple of weeks back in Arnhem, 49.84. And uh, he must be very, very pleased with that indeed. Running on the outside, of course, in 400 meter hurdles, you're kind of running blind. You don't get to see too many of your rivals unless they've gone off very quickly or you've gone off very slowly the first couple of hundred, maybe even 300, but uh, he judged that pretty much to perfection. Vaillant in lane four had gone off so quickly. There he is, center of picture. And at this stage, actually, to the left of picture in the white vest, Ramsey Angela probably was leading, stutters badly at that barrier at Angela. And Schmidt took advantage of it, grabbed a meter of him from him at that barrier. And Schmidt here, bottom left of picture, probably isn't even aware how badly backwards Vaillant is going. And Maggie, over to uh, the far side there, just getting out lean by about a metre. That winning 
time. Well under 50 seconds. 49.84. Maggie, 50.01 in second place. So nicely separated from the rest. By the clock is Nick Schmidt. It does make a difference, doesn't it? When you can come to a race with two or three competitions at least under your belt, and all track athletes know that 99% of track athletes anyway get better and better through a series of races and it's always hard to hit your straps in your first race out and for so many athletes this evening as we'll see over this next couple of hours these are the first races for the competitors so Nick Schmidt then a season's best 49.84 Maggie second 50.01 Ludi Vion hanging on for third place Chris McAllister 50.71 there for Great Britain and so quite some way outside his best he's a 49.1 man at his absolute best, Ramsey Angla, he too suffering down the home straight for fifth. Well, the women's uh, high jumpers being introduced to the uh, crowd, the crowd enjoying this. Well, let's take a look at the javelin. And we can see now some of the uh, best throws from a competition that came to a close just a, a few minutes ago. Cux here. Ending up in third place. And his best throw coming in the first round. World number seven this year, former world junior champion. That was back in 2014. And uh, very close to his two-year-old personal best just three days ago. That personal best, 83-89. Well, this was a really good opener from Cavs of Latvia. That one coming down at 82-65. He didn't know it then, but that would be the best of his series. He had four valid marks. The other three all just eased over the 80-meter line, below 81 meters. 82-65 for Gatis Cavs. Not a season's best, that was 83-80 in the national championships just on Saturday, a couple of days ago, in Yelgava. Well, the big throw that uh, really destroyed, I think, the spirit of so many others in this competition came from Johannes Vetter of Germany. World champion back in 2017, he's 27 years old now, really coming into his own. A frustrating fourth in Rio four years back. But to uh, this throw, a man coached by Boris Obugfall, remember him, Boris Henry, as he was, from Vetter in the first round, is an absolute beauty. Stays legal, hits the angle right, and look at that. 91 metres plus it came down at, 91.49 to be precise. That is, uh, by some four metres almost, the longest throw in the world this year and how they love their javelin in these parts. They call it the national sport, javelin throwing. In the winter, understandably, snowball throwing is pretty big in uh, some parts of Finland. So youngsters here grow up appreciating throwing, a very active throwing. Track and field athletics, of course, so fundamental, those basic motor patterns of movement, running, jumping and throwing, and Vetter there knew that was a big one. Better, couldn't better that. Went on to have uh, three more throws at 87, 88, and 86 metres in rounds two, three, and four. He then sat out rounds five and six. I think he knew the job was done. But Andreas Hoffmann, well, he came out in round four to set a season's best. Six of the world champions back in 2015. He's still only 28. The Germans, of course, but just as they dominated, or at least had amazing strength and depth in the pole vault a few years back on the men's side, have great strength and depth on the, in the men's javelin now. And that one from Hoffman, coming down, as I said, in round four, 85-24. Good enough for second place. Former European junior champion, Hoffman, went out and qualifying, surprisingly, at the world championships last year, having taken a, a super silver in the Olympic Stadium in Berlin at those marvellous Europeans back in 2018. Good 
Shot putter, by the way, too, is Andreas Hoffman. He's an 1859 shot putter. Didn't know that. That's an unusual double, isn't it? Javelin and shot. Boy. But that was the best of his series. Hoffman, indeed, he fouled out in rounds five and six. But uh, Vetter making it a very, very special day for the javelin throws with that winning effort. 91-49, the biggest throw in the world this year. And a 1-2 for Germany, too, with Hoffman going well. We can take a look now at the uh, women's long jump. And uh, Jasmine Sawyers, well, in the uh, second round, Jasmine, you told me at lunchtime she's in pretty good form. She's had a really good winter's training. Coming down after an initial foul in round one, she's 6 metres 54. She had a 1.4 wind behind her. Jasmine Sawyers, eighth in the Rio Games, remember, seventh in the Commonwealth Games in 2018, fourth in those European Championships in 2018. That was the best of her series. She backed it up with a 6.53 in round five. So uh, I think she'll be okay with that, Jasmine. She probably was looking for something a little bit further. And her compatriot, Abigail Erozuru, going out with her best in round four. Again, the wind generally just gusting gently behind these ladies. Rozuru, third in the jumping order, but in round four, coming up with a, a six meter 52 effort, just two centimeters shy of her compatriot Sawyers. Sawyers up winning the competition with that 654, by the way. I'm not sure I even mentioned that. Rozuru taking second place with 652. Very slight tailwind behind that naught point. Five, seventh in the World Championships last year. Won the UK Indoor Championships in Glasgow back in February. But this is her first outdoor competition. Jasmine had a competition just a couple of weeks back, she was saying. And uh, Huntington, Maria Huntington of Finland, taking third place today. Again, really tight at the uh, top. Remember, Sawyers is winning leap 6.54. Irozuru's second place, 6.52. And Maria Huntingdon here after an opening with a foul and then a 6.41 past her third round effort. And this one comes down at exactly 6 metres 50. So four centimetres covering the first three in the women's long jump. The uh, world lead, a very impressive 6.93 by Maroncha Givanova of Belarus. That was back in the middle of July. But a good day for the Brits. One and two in that women's long jump, just as uh, it was a uh, one-two for the Germans in the men's javelin. The uh, competition record, by the way, six meters fifty-four, was back in 1997. The stadium record back in 1995 was Branzeva, six meters eighty-four. So that's six meters fifty-four by uh, Jasmine Sawyers of Great Britain to take the victory equals the uh, competition record, the meeting record. Well, the women's high jump has a very solid field. No two-meter jumpers, but uh, several ladies knocking on the door of broaching the two-meter barrier, so to speak. Highest jump in the world this year, one meter 99 by Australia's Elena Patterson. That was back in late February. So, here we go again, back to that vault. And uh, Holly Bradshaw, second attempt at 4 metres 53. Goes clear, makes it look nice and simple too. She'd probably be a bit annoyed with herself for that other poor first effort. But she gets it right there. So close to the medals last year in Doha at those World Championships. Taking fourth place and a fifth in Rio. Sixth in London back in 2012, all those uh, years ago. She's one of those athletes who is, you could almost label a nearly there athlete. Sixth and fifth 
chronologically at the last two Olympic Games. How much frustrating must that be? Her fiance Paul Bradshaw, by the way, is a 147, 800 meter runner. But the pole vault, the most technically demanding uh, event of all, of course, is one of those events you really do need to get into the groove of technically more so. And I suspect you can say that there's a, a strong correlation between the degree of complexity of an event and the more uh, or the longer it takes to get into the groove, the technical groove of getting things right. Good shot of the crowd there in this home straight stand. They are uh, sensibly spaced as they were supposed to be and it's much the same around the arena on the back straights. I glance across, they are bathed in sunshine on the back straight. It's almost getting a little bit chilly here in the, uh, in the shade because if it's 20 degrees, 21 degrees out in the sun, probably about 17 or 18 degrees here in the shade and the uh, home straight is uh, very much in shadow. In fact, it's pretty much an even split between the, the far half of the stadium and this near half of the stadium. Now, Kiriakopoulou leads with 4 metres 53. This is Eleni Claudia Polak of Greece. The slight hiccup at 4.26, cleared that second time, then 4.41 first time. Now has had two failures at 4.53, and this is a height that uh, is finding people out. We've seen Malakova of the Czech Republic go out with three failures at this height. Alina Lampala of Finland has gone out with three failures at this height as well. So only uh, Kiriakopoulou, who cleared this first time in Leeds, and Bradshaw clearing it the second time, left in the competition as well now as Polak. Third time clearance from her. Pressure for that. But like Bradshaw, makes it look pretty neat. A little untidy over the bar there. It doesn't matter, does it? As long as you clear it, yeah. And actually, plenty of height there over the bar. So good ball. More to come. The bar now from 4.53. With three competitors left in, we'll move up to 4.63. And after this, after 4.63, it'll go up in now five centimetre increments. Kira Kopla, we haven't seen yet, but uh, European Championship silver medalist back in 2018 only 460 to her name this year so uh holly bradshaw on paper is vaulting better this season next event on the track the men's 110 meter hurdles the officials on the home straight have been busily here placing those barriers. They will be followed, by the way, of course, by the women's 100 meter hurdles heats. Qualifying from those uh, hurdle seats. First three go through by right with two fastest lose, the same as in those 100s earlier. And here is that uh, line up for the uh, first heat. Although I can tell you that literally about Five minutes before we came on air, I had a piece of paper thrust into my hand saying Pascal Martino Lagarde, uh, the uh, European champion from 2018, has pulled out. So I can only assume he felt a niggle in warm up. Something has kept him away anyway. Very sad that the South African, Antonio Alcana, goes in lane four. I chat with him in the bus on the way from the hotel. It's only a mile or so away. Trains with Van Niekerk in Spain and said uh, it was uh, so frustrating because. Van Niekerk has seemed absolutely fine, but as you may know, uh, provided a positive after a test for COVID a few days ago and has had to pull out of uh, one or two meetings. There's uh, Andy Pozzi. He's in very good form, goes in lane seven. World indoor champion back in 2018. Partner of uh, Katrina Johnson-Thompson, the world champion in the heptathlon. And then uh, Savona in Italy the 16th of July, set a world best did uh, Andy, 13.30 so he's unbeaten in four races so far this year, in very good form indeed Posi goes in lane seven, beside him to the right of picture, to his left is an empty lane of, Maga of uh, Martino Lagarde Willem Belocian we didn't see, but he's in 
Ben Lowe, five. Ben. Alongside Olkana, there he is to left of picture. So Olkana in four, the South African. Then the Frenchman, Bologian, European junior champion, way back in 2013. The semi-finalist in uh, Doha last year. He's a good athlete, by the way, Olkana, we saw there again in lane four. Sem fifth in the Commonwealth Games back in 2018. African champion later on that year. Only had one race so far this year, and that was in Trieste when he arrived late in his 1379. He said it wasn't a fair reflection. So Alcana in four, Belotian of France in five, Posi in seven, and we haven't seen Ilari Maninen of Finland. Never broken 14 seconds to the left of picture. Yeah. Well, away there go. First three go through by right. Remember, Posi going well, second to left. Got a race in his hands, though, going well, too, as Alcana as Belotian hits barriers. So does Alcana. Posi looking very smooth indeed. The World Indoor Champion. Looking great there, winning by a couple of meters. 13.27 from Andy Pozzi. That is a new world lead if it's confirmed. 0.7 the uh, win behind him. Yeah, and he's happy with that, and he may well be. And so often these fellas go better when it comes to a final. An hour or two later, I was talking to Alcana about that. He said, yeah, about an hour is the ideal gap. Well, their final is at uh, 5. 38 here. Let me just check that time for their final. What am I saying? 5:38. It's at 8:40. Excuse me. And uh, that is what about an hour and a half from now, an hour and 20 minutes from now, something like that. So Andy Posy may go quicker still, but that is brilliant from Posy. It's a really quick time. It's obviously a season's best for him. He was already world leader. Well, now he's world leader with a quicker time. 13.27 from Andy Pozzi. In fact, it's been adjusted. 13.25. What a big adjustment. He's a tall fella, isn't he, Pozzi? Lovely hurdling. Don't think he touches any of those barriers. Drives hard for the line. He was really going for it. And... Uh, Wins that one very comfortably. Belosian, second, 13.57. Alcana with the season's best, 13.59 in third. Well, there it is. The gloves will come off, you could say, in the final, but that might be inappropriate because I don't think Andy Pozzi was holding back there too much. No real pressure in that race. He just had to make the first three, and seeing as there were only three world-class hurdlers in it, he was always going to make the first three, barring disaster. But that is brilliant stuff from Andy Pozzi. Back to this uh, pole vault competition. Now, an opportunity for Holly Bradshaw to grab the initiative. The bar is at 4.63. Kiria Koplu has failed her first attempt, the Greek. Her compatriot, Polak, has failed her first attempt as well. I'm sure Holly Bradshaw knows full well that this is, uh, or could be, a very important vault. Kiria Koplu's blotted her copybook for the first time with that failure a couple of minutes ago. See, there's a little bit of breeze. You can see her hair blowing, possibly. But the Blackburn Harrier, probably used to a little bit of inclement weather. And she is very much a big time competitor. There you can see, yeah, there is a little bit of breeze down there. She's right below us. In fact, she's starting just past the finish line, if you like, on the home straight and sprinting backwards up the home straight on the outside there, almost up against the stands, as you can see. But a little bit frustrating because those track races have had following wins. The win behind Andy Pozzi's brilliant 13.25. And that, by the way, only about a metre slower than his lifetime. Best of 13.14 for Pozzi. The uh, win behind Andy Pozzi was 0.7. So she's vaulting into a slight wind here. It's only Bradshaw trying to pick a moment when it settles a bit more, perhaps. She's only had three volts. This will be her fourth volt. There is uh, Kiria Kopalu. 34 years old now. The uh, 
elder of the two Greeks. Been around a long time. She was eighth at the World Championships back in 2011. Remember those championships in Daegu, South Korea? In fact, she was sixth at the World Junior Championships back in 2004. Kiddo Kopolus had that this for 15 or 16 years and more. Well, Ollie Bradshaw really came to the fore with uh, a bronze medal at the World Junior Championships back in 2010. So she's been at it now for a decade and longer. But really consistent. Come major championships, she gets her head around it. Taking her time. No pressure. She decides when she goes. I'm just looking for the clock. There is no clock in pole vault, of course. So uh, Bradshaw... Her moment. Ribbon is settling now. Or is it? I suppose ultimately you can stand there all day waiting for a gap between gusts. How on earth would you know if it's a long enough gap? I suppose one advantage, if you were to be a little bit cheeky about it, is that taking your time like this makes your competitors wait as well so you are in control of the situation you are dictating proceedings and you're uh, about to vault so heat two of the men's 110 meter hurdles remember heat one won fabulously and impressively by andy posi 13.25 so this is a quick track we know that and, uh, heat two Again, some good athletes in this one. Elmo Laka goes in lane six for Finland, 12 times national champion. He's a 13.49 performer at his best, the 27-year-old, uh, coached by Antti Hapakoski. He was a 13.42 performer in years gone by. David King goes in lane seven for Great Britain. City of Plymouth Club, I bet he's been enjoying a bit of weather down in uh, Cornwall, coached by James Hillier. And, uh, he making his first outdoor appearance of 2020. 13.48, Dave King's best. Went back to, uh, you have to go back to 2017 to find that best performance from him. Semi-finalist at the Europeans in 2018. Semi-finalist that same year in the World Indoors in Birmingham. So, the lineup from the far side. Santa Huta of Finland in three, Fofana of Italy in four, Kraus of France in five, Laka of Finland six, Dave King in seven, and Peltel of Finland lane eight to the left. Well, up and away they go. Good start there from David King, second to left. Seems to be leading at the moment. It's very tight though. Here comes Elmo Laka. The Finn is looking strong. It's a real battle between these two. King forces himself to the front, gets away there by a meter, dips well on the line. 13.72 for Dave King. That is a very, very satisfying win, albeit in a heat, in a solid time by the Briton to kick off his 2020 campaign. Travelled over with uh, Dave King and a few other Brits from London yesterday in the flights. Had to uh, turn around pretty quickly at Helsinki Airport. There was supposed to be 45 minutes between flights, but in that time, I had to get off the plane and walk up, it seemed like about two miles through the terminal building to get to the uh, domestic terminal. Get our flight up here to Turku. King 1370, Laka 1383. Have a look at it again. And, uh, Dave King there did get out well, but matched by stride by stride, stride for stride by Elmo Laka. He went out in his heat of the World Championships last year. And King's strength really pushing him through there. Really impressive over the uh, last couple of flights. They do say the 110 meter hurdles is a strength event, far more than you would think for something that takes 13 or 14 seconds. And that uh, the relevance of a 200 meter, good 200 meter form is as much a part to play as 100 meter form when it comes to 110 meter hurdles. Dave King there goes through without any trouble. 
Jones, lifetime best, remember, 13.48. So he's only a couple of tenths of a second away from that. And both he and Andy Pozzi, the Brit, who won the first heat, looking very strong indeed here in Turku. Confirmation there that uh, King won from Laka. Fofana taking uh, third place with uh, 13.85, the Italian. That's uh, close to his season's best. But uh, to underline the strength of King's run, Fofana is a world championship semi-finalist from last year, and uh, King was uh, way ahead of him. Now, Oli Bradshaw then. Now at 4 metres 63. No, not to be. Very frustrated with herself there. Well, the uh, women's triple jump, another event that we will feature, and that is uh, getting underway in about five minutes. There is the uh, seven athlete lineup. Niels Nogbeta, Dovila Kilti. Wife, of course, of Will Richard Kilti, Lithuanian. Vega, Zaganova, Makala, and Petrova make the lineup. <laughs> Christina Makala is a Rio Olympic finalist. 12th, she came in the last Olympic Games. And then 12th again at the World Championships last year. Good to make the final, always nicer to make the cut. But a lot of hope around that 27-year-old, uh, but the home crowd. Or 4.63 now. The second time of asking for Nicoletta Kriakoplu. This does seem to be providing some challenges, and the Greek failed the first time, and she fails the second time, I'm afraid. A contrast though, she takes her vault without much delay at all. But the results are the same. Bradshaw's first effort. Get the feeling that anybody who clears this might have the competition in hand. Kira Kopler though is sitting pretty at the moment by dint of that first time clearance at 4.53. A compatriot Polak has to take her second attempt. However, that will be next. Well, let's have a look at the uh, finalist for that men's 110 meter hurdles. There it is, Andy Pozzi in a class apart. What, about three meters quicker than anybody else? And uh, Bolochia, Nalkana, King, Laka, Fofana, Maninen and Klaus will make it through. Two Finns through to the final. Laka with 13.83 and Maninen as well. We'll keep the uh, home crowd invested in proceedings. That final is, uh, as I said, at local time at uh, 8.40, so in almost exactly an hour. Now, here's Polak. No. Boarded effort from her. So both the Greeks have uh, two failures. Bradshaw next to go at 4.63. Next height, if anybody goes clear, is 4.68. And as uh, I mentioned, it will continue with five centimetre increments. Well, the high jump field is underway now. And, uh, the bar at 1.82. metre 82. So Dokova of the Czech Republic goes clear first time. Only the second athlete to go clear, Heta Turi of Finland, also went clear at 1 meter 82. That's uh, 5 feet 11 and a half. There's, uh, if you want to do the maths yourself, the conversion. 1 meter 83 is 6 feet. And there are almost exactly, it's within about a hair's breadth, 2.5 centimeters to an inch. Not a lot of people know that. Took me quite a few years to understand that the simplicity of that mass. Now, Chanel Shepa next to go for St. Lucia. She's a world championship finalist back in 2015 when she was a seventh and she won the NCAA title for her American college 
back then, the University of South Carolina. And that is a, a great achievement having your CV. The NCAA is one of the greatest track meets in the world, as you may well know. The two failures at 182, and she's a 196 jumper, is uh, Janelle Shepard. She, uh, in her first outdoor competition here, her last competition was indoors. That was a 190. She cleared those sort of heights fairly regularly last winter. Well, Holly Bradshaw has failed a second time at 4 meters 63, I can tell you. And now the moment of truth for Kiriakopoulou. She is in the lead, so perhaps less pressure on her, but she'd love to get this next height under her belt. Oh, yes! And it stays up, and she nails it. And now the pressure is uh, doubly applied to Bradshaw. She was already chasing. Now she's got to clear this next height. She wants to uh, stay in the contest against the better of the two Greeks. Fabulously muscled is uh, Kiriakopoulou. And looks really happy with that one. That's a season's best for her. It was 4 meters 60 back on the 18th of July. Oh, and that was in uh, Athens. Competition in which she finished in second place, incidentally. That elevates her up the world rankings just a little bit. Yeah, lovely big smile there from her as she extends her lead. Always nice to win by a height or a distance rather than on count back. So Polak has been shown how to do it. Eleni Claudia Polak. She's a 470 Volta. That was back on the 18th of uh, July as well. Indeed, it was in that competition that uh, she beat Paul, she beat uh, Kirakopoulou. Always great when you can get really strong competition domestically, you don't have to travel. Just maybe go to your local track, your local stadium, your home city and find world-class competition such a boon you're not having to put up with all the hassle of flights and hotel rooms and so on now Polak third and final attempt 463 no not close not close and you do wonder on that form how on earth she cleared four meters 70 in Athens what just uh, three weeks back now, nowhere near enough penetration across the line of the bar Lost all her zip and zing in terms of forward motion, straight up and straight down. And I mean, her high point was about a meter in this side of the bar. Well, Holly Bradshaw will go next. We'll hopefully cover that for you. The women's 100 meter hurdles hurdlers are out for the first heat. The barriers have been adjusted, they're just stripping down. Bradshaw, as you can see there, with that. Uh, Sign at the bottom, about to take her third attempt at 4.63. But there is the lineup for this first heat of the women's 100 meter hurdles. Avikainen, Vento, Sertala, Valet, Boliolo, Corte, and Harala. Fascinating athlete, Anna Marie Corte, in lane seven. A chat with her at, uh, around lunchtime. She got stranded in the US just uh, a few weeks ago traveled over from Spain for a training camp and couldn't go back to Spain where her apartment was. More of that in a minute. There's uh, Luminosa Boliolo. Set a, a season's best in her most recent race of 12.91. And uh, a 100 meter personal best recently in Rieti too. She's in good form, the Italian. She goes in six. Corte goes in seven. semi finalist of the World Championships last year, the Finn. Lives in Helsinki these days. Came back to athletics at the age of 30 after many years as a journalist on the circuit. And there's uh, Lotta Harala of Finland. Has one national title to her name, the 28-year-old, but never broken 13 seconds and uh, might struggle here. Qualifying conditions the same as for the other lane races we've seen. First three go through by right with the two fastest losers. But uh, Corte, well, she's battled her way to world class over this last couple of years at the age of 32 it is a phenomenal story i said to her you've got to write a book we used to see her sitting around uh, hotel lobbies reporting on the sport for many years on the diamond league and at other meetings 
Then she uh, started training again hard, made a comeback at the age of 30. Two years later, she has a lifetime best of 12.72. She's run 12.76 this year. On your marks. Her right hamstring was quite heavily strapped, she said. Uh, no, it's her left, actually. You can see it there. She said uh, she just got a slight inflammation of one of the tendons behind her knee. She said it's not really the hamstring that's injured. So that lineup began from the far side in lane two. Vivi Avikainen. Lotta Vento and uh, Annie Sertela, all of Finland in lanes two, three, and four. Laura Vallet of France in five. The starts are unhappy with something there, maybe too much noise in the arena, I don't know. She has received a great deal of uh, media coverage, ironically, having done so for other athletes in years gone by. Corte, the sort of glamour girl of uh, Finnish athletics this last couple of seasons. Fastest time in the world this year, by the way, is 12.73 by the Belarusian Elvira Herman. That was on the 25th of June. And the uh, meeting record, a very impressive 12.58 by Christina Clemens of the USA. That was last year. It's also the stadium record. So that lineup again, Avikainen, Vento and Sertola, lanes two, three and four, four Finland, Valletta of France, five, Bolioli of Italy, six, Corte goes in seven, second to left, and Harala in lane eight. <laughs> well, going well at the moment is Bolioli of Italy, she leads, Corte's got a bit of work to do, she wants to get back to her, but Bolioli, very quick lead leg over those barriers. Here comes Corte now, coming through very strongly towards the end, ran out of track to catch the Italian, 12.93 with a 0.6 following wind. Well, I think she'll be uh, pretty pleased with that, the Italian. She was well clear through the middle stages of the race. 12.93 is confirmed, by the way. It's uh, only two 100s outside her season's best. She's a 12.78 performer at her absolute best. Semi-finals in the World Championships last year, just like Corte. And there wasn't much between them there at the line, was there? 12.93 to 12.98. Third was uh, Sertela. Oh, no, it wasn't, excuse me. Third was uh, Harala with 13.19. So she goes through to the final. And that final will be the uh, very last track event of the meeting at what, 8.50 here, local time, so almost in exactly an hour. Those three well clear of the rest. Back in uh, fourth place was Valette with 13.42. Let's go to the uh, triple jump now. The uh, first round that we are in. Makala. Sixth in the jumping order, the Rio Olympic finalist. Best jump so far, 13.52 by Jana Nielsen of uh, Denmark. She opened the competition. This is only the first round, remember. Anything around 14 metres is very, very good triple jumping. And that looks exactly that. 1.3, the wind behind uh, Makala. She's a 14.30 jumper this year. Indeed, almost her personal best. Her lifetime best a couple of years ago, 14.31. So she's in great form. It's been uh, over 14 metres in her last three competitions. Fabulous final phase into the sand there from the 27-year-old. Good championship performer, 14.07 for uh, Makala. 1.3 the wind behind it. She can go a lot better than that, though, remember, as I said, 14.30 is her season's best. Now, Bradshaw at 4 meters 63, third and final attempt. Come on, grit your teeth, get this one right, and she does. Bradshaw gets it right. No significant celebration. I think she's still frustrated with herself. But uh, it's beginning to approach her season's limit so far. Remember, 473 is her 
2020 best. 4.63, they're under pressure. As uh, Holly Bradshaw in charge of things again. I say in charge of things, she's still in the contest and Kiriakopoulou has a battle on her hands. Barna moves up to 4 meters 68. Now my computer is indicating that both Kira Kopalu and Holly Bradshaw are going to pass at 4.68. I wonder if that means they've agreed to just go for 4.73, the pair of them. Well, there it is, confirmation of uh, the win by Boliola, 12.93 to Cortez, 12.98, and Harala, 13.19. So at least two fin through to the women's 100-meter hurdles final. And Valette, 13.42, some way back. So I'll have to wait and see if she's going to be the fastest loser. Oh, look at the flags there at the far end. Hardly a breath of wind in the arena. It is a lovely, lovely evening. Toss up whether I go for a jog after this meeting along the river or go for a bit of amber nectar. In one of the lovely little bars that sit along the river. If you get half a chance, come to this meet. It's a super little town, as uh, Turku City, I should say. Former capital of uh, Finland. So Keskitalo goes in three, Nedziri in four for uh, Finland. Good athlete, Nedziri. Watch her. Semi finest at those world championships last year. Lots of recent races and in good form. A lifetime best 12.81 goes back to 2016, but she's run 12.84 this year, so she's very close to running faster than ever. Comes from Turku, she was born here. There's Luka Kozak, second in the European Junior Championships a few years back. She's in five. Rita Herska of Finland, one time national champion, and again semi-finalist at the World Championships in Doha. She's a 12.78 performer at her best. Nadina Visser of the Netherlands. Well, you may know her better as a heptathlete, but this is her best discipline. She's run 12.62 over the barriers, 12.90 this year, the 25-year-old. And she uh, is the reigning European indoor 60-meter hurdles champion, Nadina Visser. She goes in seven. To the left of the picture there, Solène Ndama of France, former European junior champion and a very promising heptathlete. She's only 21 years old, Ndama. She has run 12.77, though, so this probably her strongest discipline, the uh, Bordeaux-born born French in lane eight. Pretty strong line-up, this one. Two semi-finalists from the World Championships in lanes five and six, Herska and uh, Kozak, and a sixth placer from Doha in Visa. So Keskitalo of Finland in three, Nedziri of uh, Finland in four, Kozak in five, the Hungarian, Herska, Visser, and Dama. And again, problem over for the starter there. Now, don't know quite what the problem is there for Solin and Dama. Hasn't been in the best of form in Dharma. Maybe she's a little bit more nervous than the rest of them. She's a 12.77 athlete and her best from a couple of years ago, but has been running almost exactly a second slower than that in her last couple of races, 13.74 and 13.75 in a couple of contests in Montpellier. On your marks. So Visser goes in seven then for the Netherlands, but uh, line up from the far side. Sara Keskitalo goes in three. 13.66, her lifetime best. Nura Lotta, Netziri of Finland as well. A semi-finalist in Doha goes in four. Kozak of Hungary in five. Herska of Finland in six. Visser goes in seven. Second to left. Watch her very quick. She should uh, qualify here comfortably. And Ndama to the left in lane eight. Set. Visser driving hard there with gritted teeth. Leading at the moment, but also going well. Nadziri, second to right. Visser beginning to ease away, getting further ahead. Builds up ahead of steam, doesn't she? Good over the final barrier. Wins there by half a metre from Nadziri and Kozak. Nice running that from, Nad from uh, Nadine Visser. 12.88 to be confirmed, but uh, very crisp indeed. And that is the season's best if it is confirmed. Just waiting for it to uh, come up. 
and taking a little time. I can tell you that in the pole vault, both uh, Kira Kopalu and Bradshaw are indeed vaulting at 473. Coming up, by the way, getting underway. About now is the men's discus with Daniel Stoll of Sweden, the world number one in supreme form. It'll be a treat to see him throw well tonight. Now, just waiting for that time to be confirmed. 12.87 for Visser. Shaved another hundredth of a second off the apparent winning time. A season's best indeed for Nadine Visser. She can be delighted with that. Second place, Nedziri, 12.96. Just dips under 13 seconds. And in third, Kozak, Luka Kozak of Hungary, 13.03. Well, Visser did gymnastics and played football as a kid. Coached by a well known name in the coaching community of uh, the Netherlands, Bart, Bart uh, Benema. So, we can go back to the high jump now, where the bar is now at uh, 1 meter 85. And the Hitta Turi going really well, cleared first time at 172, 177, 182. And now a second attempt at 1 meter 85. Oh, nice. Yeah, the Turi nails that one. And of course, these vertical jumps so demanding psychologically if you're on top of your game you enjoy it you feel you can get over the bar you believe you can get over the bar head to Turi setting up a season's best there of 1 meter 85 it was 184 and she's not far shy of her lifetime best of 1 meter 88 from last year so really good evening so far for the Finn Jumped 181 a week ago, tonight 185 so far for Turi. In fact, just uh, confirming, there's not many left in the high jump now. Kahara, no, no. Jessica Kahara, just 19 years old, she's a 187 jumper. And that from Kahara. She's so uh, ease out of the competition. Season's best is 187. Indeed, a lifetime best equaled this year. Which she uh, last jumped 187 two years ago. A sporting family. She has Kahara, cross country skier, is her sister. Her mum, Katharina, was a pro volleyball player back in the 80s. Sidokova of the Czech Republic. Still in the competition. Just had just one jump so far. Uh, first time clearance at 182. So Visser, the fastest of all of them in the uh, hurdles. That second heat won with 12.87 a season's best. Nadziri in fine form two, and uh, Kozak just outside 13 seconds. They will all go three through by right. Season's bests and personal bests for other athletes, whether or not they make it through to the final. It's been a good evening. You can, you can only do your best, and just about all athletes throughout the planet are short of competition, really, so I think everybody just a little silent clap to themselves that there's athletics meetings going on at the moment, don't you? Great to see. Conditions absolutely perfect. High summer in Scandinavia. It's a delight to be here and see it unfold. Now the men's discus. I told you this was going to be special, and it certainly is. That is a, a big field. Franz Kruger has won here five times in the past, but he's 45 years old now, the, uh, the Finn. Don't think he'll really be a factor tonight with the likes of uh, Stoll and Goodzius and Pettersson in the field, men who can throw close to 70 metres or beyond in the case of Stoll. 
271.37 just yesterday in Solentuna in Sweden. Can you believe? Saw him at breakfast this morning. Goodness, what sort of a transport he took to get here. Back to this triple jump, though. Matkala. And again, bounds out with those long legs towards 14 metres. She has the lead with 14.07 from the first round. In second place with 13.50 is Naomi Ogbeta of Great Britain. She opened with 13.50 and then 13.74 in her second round of better. It's her first competition outdoors this year. The uh, Salford athlete up near Manchester. Makala, tall and rangy, isn't she? Sixth at the World Indoors in Portland, Oregon, four years back. And that one, well, no improvement, but really consistent. 14.07 and 14.04, she's nailing it. Well, having said that, she has, like I mentioned earlier, cleared 14.30 this year, so close to her lifetime best. Coached by Thomas Salinen, who was a triple jumper back in the late 80s. 16 and a half meter plus triple jumper. Now, Gabriela Petrova. She very much a world class competitor. 1466 her best. She's played 1438 already this year. No jump in the first round. Oh, that's lovely. Really compact and well muscled, isn't she? So powerful. Good first phase, nice second phase. Brilliant final phase two into the sand. That was technically very, very sound indeed, apart from the takeoff. And I thought she was stretching a little bit for the board, but she was nowhere near it. Didn't get onto the board, so she's given away a lot of ground there. Petrova, 14.08, she takes the lead. Remember, Makala, 14.07 in the first round. So Makala shunted down. Petrova, a Bulgaria with 14.08, but there's so much more to come. A season's best 14.38. Well, that's probably what she actually jumped from the point of takeoff to the point of landing. Now, this men's discus. Stahl, of course, is last in the throwing order. Gugius next to throw. He's uh, fifth of the seven to throw. Rio Olympic finalist, world junior champion back in 2010. He's a 69 meter throw at his best. How's this one gone? Not bad at all, around 66 metres, 65 and a half metres. The uh, opener from Gudzius, that will take the lead. Up till now, the lead was uh, Poland's Robert Urbanek with 63-61, his opener. And that's 65-55 for Gudzius, something to build on. European champion back in 2018 is the Lithuanian. Kids will be sitting home watching this. He's got a son and a daughter back in Lithuania. Che will ne be next to go from uh, Slovenia and then Daniel Stahl. And be sure we will be watching that one. Well, the men's 100 meter final now. And uh, as you can see, CJ Uja right in the middle there, having uh, run so well in his heat. Uja won his heat in 10.33, but uh, Kasalainen, well, he was fourth in his heat, got through as a fastest loser. He goes in lane one. Yukatin. I haven't been, haven't been brought those hard copies of these finals, if somebody can do that. Tamer Burnett of the Netherlands goes in two. Then uh, Lamont Marcel Jacobs of Italy in three. Jacobs looked very good, winning his uh, heat the second heat in 10.29. A little bit quicker than Uja. There is CJ. 9.96. He ran six years ago. He's had far more than his fair share of uh, injuries. Coached by Jonas Tuayadodu, the Nigerian family, but born in London. No, prefers to be known as CJ, he says, because everybody gets his name wrong through the years. Joris Van Gool, Van Gool, I should say, a 10.37 performer in his heat, was second in the second heat. 
behind uh, Jacobs of Italy. Then Samuli Samuelson. Second in his the first heat behind CJ with 10.54. He's a 10 uh, 28 performer this year, so he's in good form, the Finn. A lot of hopes for him. Lifetime best. Christophe Lemaitre, well, a legend, of course, in European sprinting circles after that astonishing trio of goals back in 2010 in Barcelona at the Europeans. Then he took a bronze in Rio over 200 to give heartbreak to Adam Jamili and the rest of his British followers. Yeah, Jamili lost out by thousands of a second. Lemaitre oh, goes in lane oh, seven. He uh, was third in his seat in 10.38. And Riku Iluka of Finland goes in lane eight. On your marks. So, Kasselainen of Finland in one. Taimir Burnett of the Netherlands goes in two. Jacobs of Italy goes in three. Remember, a heat winner. He could be a real danger to Uja. Uja goes in four. Van Hul in five. Samuelson six. Lemaitre in seven. Second to left. Watch him. He'll come late. And Luca in eight. Good start there from Uja. Real battle he's got here with uh, Jacobs beside him. Jacobs getting to his clear, is he? Yes, I think he is. It's going to be a battle of the line, but Jacobs there as CJ, CJ tightened up in the last three or four strides. The win goes to Lamont Marcel Jacobs, the 25 year old. Slightly quicker in the heats. Ah, and Christophe Lemaitre pulling up lame. That's a real shame. Doesn't finish the race. What a shame for Lemaitre. There's a lot of racing in those 30 year old legs. He was a, a massive talent before his time. I think he was 19 back in 2010 when he took that trio of goals for France at 100, 200, and then the sprint relay in the Olympic Stadium in Barcelona. Maybe in the car terms, he's just got a lot of miles on the clock. Now, Stuhl, first round. Ooh, doesn't look like he gets hold of that one properly. No, no, no. What an anti-climax. Well, he did throw last night, as I said. And he did throw very well last night. And I wonder, I just wonder whether or not there's a bit of fatigue creeping in. We're all mortal. 71-37 he threw last night. That was a world lead. Back to this 100 metres. Look at Uja there, fourth from right with Jacobs staying cool. And then you could see Uja straining because he knew he was a few centimetres down and then gritted teeth and the form goes over the last 15-20 metres. Third place there going to Van Hul. 10-11 to 10-17. Well, the season's best for CJ Uja. And uh, he will be frustrated at that one when he watches it back, I'm sure. He has run 10-10 and 10-14 already this year, has Jacobs. He's got a few races under his belt. Whereas uh, Uja, well, he hasn't raced since the indoor season. And that can make a difference. That might explain, to be fair, without making excuses the gap between the two. You just need to get some races to get in the groove, that competitive groove. 1.3, the win behind them, by the way, so it was legal. 10-11 for Marcel Jacobs. His season's best, 10-10, so he's very close to that. Look at the contrast, no strain at all there on his features. 10-11 for him, Uja 10-17, Van Hul in third place, 10-28, and Kazalainen, and a personal best, great personal best in fourth. 10.34, that's a big personal best, it was 10.52, he's just run nearly two metres quicker than ever before. Well, there it is, official for you. And what Marcel Jacob, 10.11 to Uja's 10.17. There'll be more in the legs of CJ, you wait and see. Van Hul there, 10.28, great running from Finland's Kazalainen. This uh, pole vault now. And Kirill Koplu at 473. Remember, both she. No. No, the bar comes down. Both she and uh, Bradshaw battling out this height. Is that her third attempt? 
And that the final attempt from Mikiri Alkopoulou. So she has hit the blocks there. She does still lead on countback from Holly Bradshaw. They both played 463, the previous height at the third time of asking, but the height before that, 453, Kira Alkopoulou cleared first time and Bradshaw at the second time of asking. Well, now Hitta Turi at 1 meter 90. She cleared 185 second time. We saw that third attempt at 190 and it's very close. Oh, it was there and she knows it. That was desperately close from the fin. Frustrating perhaps in a way. But uh, they have a pretty good idea of how well they've jumped as they're going over the bar and head to Turi. That would have been a personal best. She cleared 188 last year. 190 would have been better than ever before. And she's happy because she knows it's there. I think that's why. It'll come. Only 181 a week ago, 185 today, and surely in the next couple of comps that 190 will come. So Turi wins then with 185. That second time clearance of the season's best for her. Sidakova, 182. That's quite a scalp. She's a 191 performer this season. Quite a scalp for Turi. And Kahara, 1 meter 82. Well, she has jumped 187 this year. Back to the triple jump. Christina Makala once again. Petrova, remember, taking the lead with that second round clearance of 14.08. Second round uh, bound, I should say, of 14.08, having fouled out in the first round. Makala has been fabulously consistent. Look at her two efforts, 14.07 and 14.04. You just need one big effort. And she is capable of it. 14.30 already this year. Petrova, mind you, 14.38 this year. They have got a nice following wind. Well, that looks better. That looks better. Good first phase. Slightly short middle phase, but brilliant effort to round it off into the sand. Good on the board, too. Really nice on the board. Remember when Petra jumped that 14.08, she didn't even make the board, so there's plenty more to come from the Bulgarian. They have a tradition, don't they, in the horizontal jumps, the Bulgarians. 14.12, well, not as far as I thought, but she does regain the lead. It's a lovely little ding-dong going, going on down there just below us in the uh, women's triple jump. 14.08, the gauntlet thrown down at the feet of Petra for Bulgaria. Now has to make up a four centimeter deficit. And this uh, next jump will conclude the third round. Next event on the track, by the way, the women's 1500 meters, which is uh, about 10 minutes away just yet. We can concentrate on these field events and, of course, the discus. And just to bring you up to speed with that event. Stahl, of course, fouled out with that opening effort, and he is next to go. Here he is. Now, he's a big fellow, I can tell. He walked into uh, breakfast this morning, and the room darkened. He covered up the window just about. 71 metres yesterday. Can he hit one big hit? No, dear, oh dear. And that's a shame. Just below 61 metres, but not quite clicking just yet for the reigning world champion. Took that gold in Doha, having had a, a brace of silvers at the World Championships in 2017 in London and then a, a European Championship silver in 2018 behind Gudzius. That was a bit of a shock. A wheelchair, 100 metres, is the next event on the track. Next event. And this uh, features eight athletes, a domestic affair. And you can see the variation in abilities there. But of course, it is down to their category. 
T51, T52, T54. Those are categorizations referencing the degree of uh, disability that the athletes have to contend with. Sini Paukari goes in one, Tuomo Imanka in two, Amanda Koteya goes in three, a T54 athlete. Henry Manni goes in uh, four. Not too far outside his personal best this year. Leo Pecatati, again, close to his lifetime best this season. Esa Pecamatila, well, his personal best, not far outside, 14 seconds. Nice gusting wind tonight. We might see some, uh, some quick times from these athletes. There's uh, Tony Pispannen, T51 performer. Nuso Nutio, T54 performer. 22 seconds on paper. His best time has come this year. The only two T52 athletes in the field is Nuotio. And uh, well, on paper, he's slower than all these other athletes. He is, of course, uh, performing to a degree in a sort of isolation because there's no other category the same as his, no other athlete with the same category as him in this lineup. So Paukari in one, Himanka in two, Kotia in three, Mani in four. Tati in five, Matila, Pispanen, and Nuotio. And a really good pushing here from Tati in five. On paper, the quickest in the field, and he's going to win this one very comfortably indeed. Look at the power there as he approaches the line, accelerating, I think, all the way. And over in lane one, Sini Palkari. And in lane eight, Yusu Nuotio bringing up the rear. For that winning time, 13.95. Well, it's the season's best for Tati. Wind, just a gentle breeze behind them with that one, but it all helps. 13.95 confirmed. Matila in second place with 14.94. So the gap between them just under a second. Both T54 category athletes leading pair, Tati and Matila. But that is a, surely a 10 meter winning margin there from uh, Leo Pekka, Tati. Tight for the minor places. Imanka was third, 15.51. Damani's 15.91 in fourth. see the lap races too for the uh, wheelchair athletes 800s and 1500s where no quarter is given absolutely the fiercest of competition every time you watch those sort of middle distance races but that one a pretty comfortable win for Leo Pecatati the season's best to boot as well he's sharpening well and this a Pecamatilla and Himanka in second and third Holly Bradshaw has seen Nikira Koplu fail three times at 473. This is her third and final attempt at that height. No, it's not to be. Well, that's frustrating. Finishes in second on the night on count back to the Greek Nikoleta Kira Koplu, who takes the win. And it's frustrating for Bradshaw because she has cleared that height recently. It just goes to uh, underline, I suppose fact that these athletes are not machines, which uh, sometimes people tend to think they are. There it is, confirmation of the win for Nicoleta Kirakopoulou, the uh, world championship medalist, or European championship medalist, I should say, just ahead of uh, Holly Bradshaw. Now, back to this discus. Simon Pettersen 
61.85. He's lying in fourth place, is the Swede. Well, that's just over 60 metres. Round 61. I don't think it's as good. No, he fouls out. He knows it's not as far as his uh, opener his, of 61.85. No, what we're all waiting for, everybody in the stadium saw, is for Stuhl to hit the straps, his straps right in one of these efforts. The throw with a couple of very solid efforts. Indeed, he's had the two best throws of the competition so far. 65.55, his opener, good just. And then his second round, 63.71, is better than second place Durbanex. Only valid effort, 63.61. And he knows he needs to grab every metre he can here because Stahl is waiting. And that's better. That's better, no doubt about it. That's around 66 metres. Slight improvement. Very, very fast at the moment of release, isn't he? Quite a compact thrower. He hasn't got that massive arm span that uh, you associate with so many of the bigger throwers. I'm thinking of Frederick Dakers, for example, who holds the uh, competition record at 66. Less than half a metre shy of Dakers's meeting record, stadium record as well it is. And now, Christian Che of Slovenia. Without qualifying at the World Championships last year, having taken gold at the European Under-23 Championships earlier in the summer, he is far more linear, isn't he? He's a long throw, and that's nice from Che. Well, that'll improve things. He opened with a 61.02, then a 62.90, and that one is beyond 65 metres. He's got the levers, hasn't he? There's no doubt about that. He could hardly be a different build to the, the likes of uh, Gutierrez and, and Che. And, and uh, Stahl, I should say. He's a real rising star in this discus throw this year. By the end of last month, he'd already improved his pre previous personal best by five metres this year. He's a 68.75 thrower now. And that one by Chase, 66.07. Well, he is in second place. Shunts Urbanek down to third place. Here is the big fella. Now, he'll be very focused here. Round three. He'll be angry with himself. Two no throws so far for Stuhl. That's better. That's more like it. <laughs> Don't get in his way. Take a bit of stopping. 69.23 for Daniel Stahl. Normal services resumed. Almost lost his balance, but stays in the circle. Beautifully flighted disc. And the 70-metre barrier beckons. Smashed it last night, as I said, in solid tuna. The 71.37 to improve his own world best for this year. That 69.23 from Stuhl might have just put the competition to bed, and now he can relax. <laughs> Lovely smile he's got, hasn't he? The vibrancy really enjoys himself to Stuhl. And that, of course, is the meeting record there and then by about two and a half metres. It was 66.74 to Frederick Dakers of Jamaica from last year. Now Stuhl has taken it into different territory. The women's 1500 metres, the next event on the track. Quite a small field, just seven athletes, and one of those is a pacemaker, uh, Sophie Van Akkom of Belgium. She's due to take them out at 2.10 pace. That's 65 per lap, so about 4.04 pace. Now there's Mel Courtney Bryant, Commonwealth uh, bronze medalist in 2018 to Semenya and Chep Koech on the Gold Coast. Bronze medalist last year at the European Indoors, over 3,000 metres to Laura Muir and Kloster Helfen in Glasgow. It's her first outdoor race of this year. What sort of shape is she in, the 26-year-old Britain? Erin Wallace, coached by uh, Andy Young. Normally trains with Laura Muir, but has had to keep apart because of uh, coronavirus in recent weeks. More of her in a minute. Elise van der Elst, second in European under 23, 1500 last year. It's her first race outdoors as well. There's the pacemaker, Van Arkham, 31-year-old. Best of 4.07, that was uh, four years ago. 
should set it up nicely for something close to four minutes if they can go with it. Amelie van Seyten of Norway, another who's 800 personal best of 204, suggests a better time at 1500. She's only run 413, but this is her eighth race since the 3000 in May. So watch Seyten of Norway. Katarina Trost, her personal best for 800. She's very close to under two minutes. She, uh, suggests she can run quick. She's only run 4.09 for 1500, but she's better than that. And Rosie Clark, better known as a steeplechaser, steeplechase UK champion last year. Pretty good on the flat. She's run 4.07 for 1500, 8.51 for 3000. Lots of potential still at steeplechase, I think. It's her first outdoor race of the year as well for the Commonwealth, fourth place and nearest, nearest the camera. So this uh, small field gets underway. The uh, meeting record is a pretty respectable 4.06 by Winnie Nanyondo of Uganda from last year. That's the stadium record as well. The world best, mighty impressive, uh, 4.00.02 by the USA's Carissa Schweitzer. That was in uh, Portland, over in Oregon, about three weeks ago, the 21st of July. So, Trost looked like she's up for this. He's a 4.09 performer. And I'd like to see Mel Courtney Bryan go with this as well. She's uh, married, of course, to the British decathlete, international decathlete Ashley Bryan, coached by uh, Mark Pawley, the Shaftesbury Barnet Harrier, runs for that North London club made famous by the likes of Dave Bedford back in the 70s when he was breaking world, world and European records. So Satan at the rear of the field for Norway. And that uh, personal best of 4.13 earlier on this season. They go through 400 metres. A little bit on the quick side. 65.32. Actually, that's OK. I thought that time came up a long time after they'd gone through the 400 metre point, but we'll go with that split. 65.3. Van Akom needs to keep pushing along here. Keep it, keep it healthy. You trust pacemakers to get it right. Mill Courtney, good speed, good strength as well. Strangely, her 800 personal best is only 204, even though she's run 403 for 1500 metres. That was on the Gold Coast when she took that bronze medal at the Commonwealth Games. But uh, always tough for athletes in their first outdoor race of the year because no matter what you've been doing in training, your mind, your confidence has to be wavering. Two laps to go. 154 there, that was a 65.5. She's doing a pretty good job here, Van Akum. Just needs to keep pushing it along, otherwise they're going to get to 800, a long way outside uh, 210. I think she's done a good job, the pacemaker. Let's have a look at that time. Yes, 211.7. Well, that's OK. It's a little bit on the slow side. But Mel Courtney's got the strength and the speed endurance to push on from here. What will she do through this final 600 metres? She's got thrust breathing down her neck. But she's an experienced racer now, is the uh, Britain. Has a best of 14.53 for 5,000. She's got really good strength and speed. Fifth in the European Championship, 5,000 back in 2018 when she'd uh, established herself as a very much a world-class 1500 meter runner. I think that strength, that endurance factor, surprised a few people. They come to the bell this time, almost exactly three minutes at the bell as Courtney begins to ease clear. Trost in second place. Van der Elst in third. And the gaps are widening, and Courtney drives on hard, goes through. 1,200 lap from Courtney there, maybe 60, high 63s as the gap widens more of a metre, 316. Well, that's about a 63 second. And the class really begins to tell. Trost under a threat there from Elise van der Elst, who's a 4.05 performer, and that may be, underlines the quality of this run from Mel Courtney. The gap is now 15, maybe 20 metres ahead of this little pack. As she comes around the second part of the bend, Mel Courtney into the straight. There it is, a huge gap, and that's been built up over the last 250 metres. Mel Courtney driving on hard towards the line. Now watch the clock, this could be pretty impressive. The meeting record, remember, 4.06 by Nanyondo of Uganda last year. Four minutes clicks by, Mel Courtney comes through the line there. Now, 4.03.71 from Mel Courtney. 
Well, that is three tenths of a second outside her personal best. A fabulous effort. I got a final 400 at 62.8. That was fantastic. World-class finishing there from the Britain. The speed and strength combinations have been uh, worked on well through the winter. No wonder she's smiling. That's a glorious feeling, so hard to replicate. That utter exhaustion, but with a deep satisfaction after a tough middle distance race. It's a glorious pain, I think you can say. But she should be delighted with that Mel Courtney because uh, only a half a stride outside her lifetime best, 4.03.69 after the race was set up so well by the pacemaker and no wonder she's got a smile a mile wide across her face because it uh, just knocks everything makes sense of everything all those months and months of hard work about which of course there's always a slight question mark you're never sure if you're getting things right talking to one or two athletes earlier have had a poor run today here they were looking forward to racing. They've been away training at altitude. I won't mention any names, but you're never quite sure. But Mel Courtney there gets that massive stamp of approval with that 1,500-metre win on her winter's work and most of her summer's work as well. Vanderell second with 4.09, the winning margin. About five and a half seconds there for Mel Courtney. Back to this discus, though. And, of course, the big fella is out. And now he's got the bit between his teeth. Daniel Stahl, 69.23. In round three, not quite as good. That's about 66 and a half, maybe 67. He doesn't like it, but he's enjoying himself. And that's good. That's usually the way you need to be when big performances come. So four rounds gone. Everybody else after that monster from it, Stahl at the end of the uh, third round. All but one of the other six fouling out in the fourth round. So they knew the pressure was on. Now back to this triple jump. And Makala still in the lead with that third round effort, 14-12. She passed her fourth round effort. Petrova couldn't catch her, so this is round five for her. Well, again, oh, that's a shame. That's a great shame. Because that looked a long way clear of 14 metres. So punishing on the body, that left knee. A little bit of light strapping across the front. Well, it's not the quickest time in the world this year, but it's a mighty impressive run. I'm sure if uh, you could rank the quality of runs over 1,500 this year, that would put Mill Courtney in the top three or four. A 62.8 final lap to win by some five seconds and more in 4.03 in the 1,500 metres here today. 4.03.69 for the Britain. Absolutely superb. And she destroyed that field down the back straight and around the final bend and kept on pumping hard down the home straight. That was the battle for second place. Won by Elisa van der Elst of Belgium. 4.09.32. Amelie van Seyten, by the way, the Norwegian. I said she's worth a quicker time because of her 800-meter personal best. She did set a big personal best. 4.09.78 for the Norwegian. Brilliant run take some some three and a half seconds off her personal best with that third place there it is Courtney Bryan of Britain the win 4403 Van der Els 409 Seiton a big personal best 409 and Katarina Trost who tried hard to go with Courtney Bryan in fourth place 410.58 well there is Apro Dusut the uh, president of Finland enjoying proceedings with uh, one or two colleagues and getting perhaps a little bit of technical knowledge on board with some explanation there from the gentleman to the right. Never stop learning, do you? Although I think uh, for many Finns, the sport of track and field athletics is pretty much in their DNA. And appropriately so when you think of who this meeting is named after, who the stadium is named after. Paavo Nurmi, he was... Uh, Kind of the Usain Bolt of his time, really, with nine gold Olympic gold medals. Simon Pedersen is uh, next to go in this men's discus. Pedersen lying in fifth place. He's only had one valid effort from his four throws so far, and he fouls out that one as well. 61-85, coming in the second round. He just cannot seem to get it right. 
Well, a world championship finalist last year, the Swede. He is a 67-metre thrower this year. And indeed, actually, last night, he finished second to uh, Stoll in Solentino with 66.51. But today, he's some five metres or so down on that. Robert Urbanek. He's lying in fourth place. He, too, has only had one valid throw from his four so far. That was in the first round, 63-61. That isn't right either for Urbanek. Funnily enough, he was in Solentuna last night as well. Third place for him in Solentuna, 63-69. He's in fourth place here, but he's fouled out rounds two, three, four, and five. So the uh, second half of this competition, the scorecard is almost exclusively crosses for no throws on my computer. Christian Czech will be next to grow, to uh, go. Only 21, Stahl, by the way, is 27. I wonder if in years to come, maybe not too far into the future, this young man might be a threat to the big Swede, although Stahl is only 27. Oh, that's a shame. Fouls out that one. Quite nicely flighted. It was about a 64-metre throw from Che. Remember, he's in third place with 66.07. His big effort coming in round three. And Goodzius, funny enough, next to throw, he's lying in second place. And his big effort came in round three, 66.39. And of course, Stahl's only valid effort so far from his four efforts was in round three, 69.23. Well, Che doesn't have the Solentunia excuse to his card, though he did win the national championships at the weekend with 62-37. Now, Goodzius. Coached by a couple of well-known names from the throwing world, Vaclav Kirikas and uh, Miliauskas. 69 and a half meter throw at his best 69 59 but he'll need to throw about that far to get ahead of stall here and that's not bad either again around 66 meters he fouls out that one though he was putting together a nice series 61 in the first round 62 in the Second round, in fact, Goodzius, excuse me, 65 in the first round, then 63, then the 66, his best so far. And in fact, Goodzius, they're given 65, 75. My mistake, apologies. It wasn't a foul, that fifth round effort. 65, 75, but his best remains is round three, 66, 39. So he's in second place. He has one effort left in which to catch Dahl. And the big Swede turns into the circle now as we look at... Uh, Goodzius' card. So. What can he do here? Does he get this one right? Oh, I think he might have done. Is that five metres? I think it probably is. I think he might have, might have just taken the meeting record into 70 metre territory. <laughs> like a little bit of air guitar and you're at the best discus thrower in the world by some distance 70 meters 20 it was five meters and more really enjoying himself and lovely to see that camaraderie amongst his throws isn't it <laughs> Well, of course, discus throwers uh, like a slight wind. Right-hand throwers like a slight wind coming into their faces from the right. And if anything, if he's got a slight tailwind tonight on these throws, then it's not really helping him. They're throwing in the direction down the home straight from the far corner, sort of over near the 200 meters start. So if anything, any slight breeze down the uh, stadium going down the back straight uh, against the line of running is against his throws. So 70 metres 20 for Stuhl. Probably the performance 
of the meeting, although we did have a rather special javelin throw earlier, as we see the uh, final of the men's 100 meters start list. 110 meter hurdles, I should say, excuse me. Maninen, Kraus, Belochen, Laka, King, Potsi, Fofana, and Alcana. Well, Maninen goes in lane one. Maninen uh, had never broken 14 seconds before tonight. And, uh, around 14.10 for fourth place to go through as the fastest loser to this final. And we saw Simon Kraus of France. He goes into Willem Belochian. Season's best of 13.25, Belochian. Belochian uh, running 13.57 in his heat for second place. Side Bologian, Elmo Laka of Finland, he too in very good form. Dave King would have been delighted with uh, his heat. King and his heat going out to a win in 13.70. And then Andy Pozzi, who's been in such good form and uh, improving 30, with 13.25 and a win in his heat, the world best that he's held for a couple of weeks now. Side Pozzi, Hassan Fofana of Italy, we saw just then in lane seven. And Antonio Alcana of South Africa, who was third in his heat in 13.59, uh, a season's best for him. It said to me earlier, Fofana, then nearest the camera, that he uh, enjoys heats and finals just an hour or so apart and always feels he can go better in the final. Well, Andy Pozzi. Been around a while now, 28 years old. He is world indoor champion. He's world number one on paper so far this year. Of course, a lot of Americans haven't really got their season rolling yet. They haven't been able to. But unbeaten in five races now after that heat. Can he make it unbeaten after six races? Andy Pozzi goes in at lane six. Third from left, Pozzi beside him. Fourth from, right, fourth from left is uh, David King. Pozzi leading at the moment, also going very well as Bolochian. Bolochian in lane three. The only competition here for Pozzi, who drives on towards the line, dips at the line, then wins by two metres. 13 18 for Andy Pozzi. 1.1 the following wind. And that is so close to his lifetime best from three years ago. 13 14 he ran in 2017. And as he, Andy Pozzi, ironically, in a season so dramatically disrupted by coronavirus, is running. Well, almost better than ever. He's had a little short, sharp series of races. He's now unbeaten in six races in the last three weeks or so. Set a world best on the 16th of July in Savona with 13.30. He's improved that here tonight, 13.25 in his heat. And now Andy Pozzi improves it in that final. We're waiting for the time to be confirmed. But 13.18, I think it was, that came up. And that, I think, the second best time of Andy Pozzi's career. Third to left he is. Good start from him. And you can see uh, third from right there, also going well as Bologian of France. Really smooth hurdle of Bologian. Pozzi working hard, but he's a very crisp technician. Drives hard for the line there too. Pull, he pulls away by another half metre off the final barrier, I reckon. 13-17 is confirmed for Andy Pozzi. It's the season's best with a 1.1 win behind him. And plenty of daylight there between Pozzi and Belosian and the rest. Belosian second with 13.38, his season best for him. And I think Dave King might have dipped to third place there. Yes, he does, 13.57 for Dave King. That is uh, very close to his lifetime best as well of 13.48 in his uh, first outdoor competitions this evening of 2020. Brilliant stuff. Well, back to this triple jump. Final effort now from Christina Makkala of Finland. She has the competition won. That is confirmed. Oh, oh, oh no. Well, maybe the incentive wasn't there. She's trying to protect that knee. It doesn't matter a jot, does it? 
Gabriel Petrov up, feeling the pressure in the latter stages. The Bulgarian who finished in second place, led early on with a 14.08 in round three, in round two rather, but she fouled out in rounds five and six, did Petrova. Her best 14.08 to Matla's 14.12. So a home win then, in that uh, field event, in that triple jump. And the final round unfolding in the discus, remember. confirmation of that win for Makala 14-12 to Petrova 14-08 quite close at the top Kilty 13-79 in third place well Urbanek hasn't been a good day at the office for him has it can he get this one right where does it come down well around 60 meters he won't be at all pleased with that he opened with 63 61 he fouls out that one so i'm afraid the pole has just the one valid effort for fourth place with the uh, fouls in rounds two to six frustrating for urbanek the solemn tuna Fatigue perhaps getting to him. And he posses that determination all too clear. What a fabulous win for him. And again, it underlines that value in a series of races, especially in such a technical event as the high hurdles. Velocian and Dave King in second and third. Good runs from both of them as well. Now, Christian Che. In third place, 66.07 came in round three for him, but no improvement there, and he fouls out that one. I'm afraid he's fouled out rounds four, five, and six. Just two men to throw. Gudjus, who will have to throw a personal best to catch Stuhl. That is some, uh, some demand. The Lithuanian has about the most consistent series of throws. He's only fouled once from his five efforts so far. But he is in second place with 66-39 in round three to Stuhl's 70-20 in round five. Good just Never broken 70 metres. Two years ago, 69-59. He threw in the season in which he took that European title. Wouldn't it be lovely to join that 70-metre club? No, about 64 metres. Maybe the uh, real sting taken out of the competition of so many of these, these others when they can see Stahl in such fine fettle. All they can do is sit back and admire his uh, technique, his consistency. Because uh, Gudzius well, he has been in very fine form in recent competitions, 68, 67, 67, and then 68. Four times over 66 metres in recent weeks. Uh, Andreas Gudzius, and again here tonight with second place, 66, 39 in round three. Four second place to this man, and who else? Well, Stuhl's mother was finished born. So I'm sure he's got very strong links to this nation. She was also a thrower, she was a shot putter. 14 metres 11 back in 1982 and 51 metres plus back in 1988. His mum, Taina. How does this one go from Stahl? Well, it's not bad. I think it would have been good enough to win the night had it been valid, but there's no need. And he broaches 70 metres yet again. Unseats Frederick Dakers of Jamaica from the uh, meeting record list, the stadium record list. It was 66.74 from last year when Dakers came here and won. But Stuhl, 70 metres 20, takes it into a different sphere altogether. And they do so enjoy the long throws in these parts. Crowd really rising to that one.
will be a tired man tonight, Stuhl. Wonder if he celebrates by going to bed early or heading out for a, a decent meal and something to wash it down with. Doesn't matter. He wins very comfortably. 70 meters 20 for Sweden's Daniel Stuhl. Andreas Gudjo 66.39 and Chase 66.07 as well. The top three all throwing long tonight here in uh, this glorious Parvo Nermi Games. So the final track event of the program here in Turku in this 58th edition of the PNG, as they call it, is the women's 100 meter hurdles. And there is the lineup. A lot of hopes around uh, Anna Marie Korte of uh, Finland. She goes in lane three. In lane one, Solene and Dama. Oh, and Dama. France. Finished fourth in her heat in 13.28. Uh, That's how she qualified for this. Herska, Rita Herska, finished fifth in her fourth equal actually in the heat with 13.28, right alongside and Dama to qualify. Cote, well, listen to the cheer for her, one or two whistles as well. 12.98. In her heat behind the Boliolo is 12.93. Visser, though, was the class act of the uh, first round. The Dutch athlete, 12.87. Very impressive indeed for the uh, European indoor champion. She does start fast. Took gold in Glasgow last year. Nadiri getting a big cheer too in front of the home crowd. 12.96. She was second behind Visser in her heat was a Nadiri. Semi-finals of the World Championships last year. Boliolo was first in uh, the first heat in 12.93. And she has been in very good form. Harala, that's uh, Lotta Harala, another Finn. She goes in lane seven. Former national champion. And uh, in lane eight, completing the lineup, Hungary's Luka Kozak. She too, a semi-finalist last year in the world. Championships holds the national record for Hungary at 60 meter hurdles. Kozak, watch her start from lane eight to the left of picture as we see them. But uh, Nadina Visa, well, she's such a talent. You can see too she enjoys her her athletics. She oozes confidence. Recently set a personal best in Arnhem over 200 meters, and has shown good form at 100 meter hurdles as well. That 200 personal best by Visa. Was 23.38, and she ran 12.95 in Arnhem Arm, Arm as well for the 100 meter hurdles. So, and Dharma in one, Herska two, Korte goes in three, Visa goes in four, probably the favourite as they're in their blocks. Nedziri in five, Boliolo the Italian in six, Harla of Finland seven, and Luka Kozak of Hungary in lane eight. Visa fourth from right. Good start from Visa, really good start. Got a jump on the field there, and she's away. Also going pretty well at the moment is Herska in lane two. Here comes Corten, also going very strongly at the moment is Bogliolo, the Italian. But Visser is not going to be caught. Wins there by a metre. 12.66. Wow. Well, the meeting record was shaking a little bit there. 12.58 by Christina Clement. Visser sets a massive season's best, and she's only four one hundredths of a second outside her lifetime best. Great running. Did she enjoy that or what? She's a great technician too. Great work done clearly under the tutelage of a Bart Benema. She does it gracefully too, doesn't she? She has the grace of a former gymnast. Doesn't exude power in quite the same way as some other athletes do. So we can look at it there on the screen. 12.68 in fact, but that doesn't matter. It's still a very impressive indeed. In fact, it is the fastest time in the world this year. Should have pointed that out. Hermann of Belarus held the world lead at 12.73. So 12.68 for Visser makes it one of the performances of the meeting. Brilliant stuff from the Dutch athlete. I said she would start well, and did she just? She has a, an enviable record of consistency at major championships. World Student Games champion in 2017. And Visser there. 
fourth from right. Look at the gritted teeth, working really hard here. She knew Bolliolo, third from left, the Italian, was going to be a threat. But Vissa maintained her form, and Bolliolo just losing a bit of steam here as on the near side coming through in lane eight was Kozak. Cortec finished up in fourth place, 12.89 for her. So again, a long way under 13 seconds, that's pretty solid. Doesn't compare with her season's best of 12.76. She was, I think you could say, in glorious isolation, Visser, as she crossed the line, wasn't she? 12.68 to Bolliolo's 12.79, that's a metre gap between the pair of them, more or less, at the line. So much determination there off the final barrier, and then that grimace becomes a smile. I think she glanced across and seen the clock. Yeah, bang, there, sees the clock, the smile. Well, Nadine Vesa, 12.68, completes the... Uh, track action at this meeting indeed all the action with a brilliant run 12.68 another world best here in turku at this 58th edition of the parvo nermi games in the parvo nermi stadium what a meeting it's been take your pick of the best performances i mean when you think about that uh, men's javelin earlier with uh, johannes vetter 91.49, killing the competition stone dead. He backed that up with throws of 87 metres, 88 metres, 86 metres. So uh, is that the best performance of the meeting? It may well be, I think, although some will dispute that. They will say it's the 70 metres, uh, 20 by Stahl. Well, actually, just checking, I'm just getting the news that Stahl's longest throw, 70-20, has been disqualified, and it'll have to settle for the 69-23. Well, that's really frustrating, and how unusual for a delay that long to uh, take place. In fact, I think we'd put the result on screen, hadn't we? I'm not sure, but uh, Stahl is the winner with 69-23. I'm sure it doesn't matter too much to him. Clearly, the rules have been followed. Well, let's take a look at some of the highlights of tonight's meeting. Can you tell me what's coming? There have been several world bests, plenty of meeting records. And uh, really, when you think this kicks off, well, or continues perhaps a series of meetings that are coming at us thick and fast in coming days, well, this was uh, very special tonight indeed. Vetter, I think, perhaps the performance of the meeting with that javelin win. 91.49 in the first round for the big German meeting record and a world best in the women's long jump. He had uh, a win there and Jasmine Sawyers, very impressive too. She was Sawyers winning with six meters 54. Stahl showing that wonderful form to the local crowd. Took him a little while to get going after the fatigue of uh, <laughs> having been competing in Sweden just last night, less than 24 hours ago, I think. Nadina Vissa, well, wasn't she impressed with that 100 metre hurdles? 12.68 for a, a world best, and of course, very close to the meeting record as well. Hope you've enjoyed it. I certainly have. My first visit ever to Turku, and what a super little city it is. We get half a chance getting here next year for the 59th edition of the Pavonomi Games. From me, Tim Hutchings, and everybody here in the production team in Turku. Bye-bye.